recording this video on Sony's ZV E10 digital camera. Now it's an E mount camera, so I can uh, change lenses. And what I'm using here is Sony's 20mm f1.8 Prime. Now I'm showcasing this because of the ability to get that uh, defocus background. Now that uh, background blur or bokeh um, is available on the ZV-1 camera, but using that smaller one inch sensor, it's obviously a little bit more subtle than what you're seeing here now. Now that I'm using the larger APS-C uh, size sensor and an f1.8 lens, obviously I'm uh, really stretching that out. Now I, I'm using a little uh, remote here. Um, you can see this is Sony's uh, Bluetooth remote. Now I've got the product showcase feature on, which is why it's snapped to that and is not holding on my IAF. Now I'll be just uh, using this uh, just to uh, showcase some of the features that I can do here. For instance, uh, I've got the C1 key uh, programmed uh, to the, uh, the, the background defocus. So I can um, go into the defocus mode. Obviously that's already in f1.8 aperture, but just by pressing the C1 key again, I can pull more depth of field. So now quite clearly you can see uh, much clearer, sharp detail in that background. Now I'll just uh, switch that out again. Now obviously if we are going out on location and using that f1.8 aperture on a prime lens, you are going to need an ND filter because this one doesn't have uh, an inbuilt ND filter. Um, so you probably want to arm yourself up with a variable ND so you can actually use uh, this feature to its uh, uh, best advantage. Now with also this uh, remote here, uh, I do have the uh, ability to use clear image zoom. Even though it's a prime, I can zoom in and zoom out using that clear image zoom feature. So even though I'm not using a zoom lens, I can still uh, zoom on this uh, E-mount camera. And of course, uh, if I ever would want to just uh, check focus, I do have an AF on button. If I just want to just absolutely check that uh, uh, I am in focus before starting to record. So we've got that uh, great feature of stopping and starting the video. And also what we've got with this camera is a great advantage of being able to use the Sony's new uh, uh, digital multi-interface shoe, which we've seen on other cameras. First appeared on the Alpha 7R4, and now on the Alpha 7C and the A1 cameras, and now also appears on this ZV-1. So I can use a range of the uh, digital microphones. I'm currently using uh, Sony's new Bluetooth um, lapel microphone here. So this is going to give me great um, air, uh, audio quality uh, when using this camera. But I've also got that inbuilt uh, three capsule digital microphone, and I can also use uh, Sony's uh, digital um, uh, blue uh, shotgun microphone and maybe I should showcase those now so you can see the differences between audio quality uh, switching out those different um, uh, microphone systems when using the ZV E10 camera. This is what the camera sounds like with the inbuilt three capsule digital microphone. Now I'll set the recording level to level 30 for this particular recording clip and now I'll proceed to show you what the uh, camera sounds like with a variety of different digital microphones. Now I'm wearing uh, Sony's new uh, Bluetooth digital lapel microphone. You can probably see I've just got a discreet little uh, stereo microphone uh, attached to my shirt here. And now you can probably quite clearly see uh, the improved audio quality by using this. So I definitely recommend if you're out on location uh, to maybe invest in one of these slightly uh, superior um, digital microphone systems that's now available uh, for these cameras. Obviously the, um, the ZV E10 does have that digital multi-interface shoe or hot shoe. And so it'll take a variety of the digital microphones, including the shotgun microphone, which I'll now show you what that sounds like. And finally, this is uh, what the uh, audio sounds like with Sony's uh, shotgun microphone. Obviously it's the digital shotgun microphone, and it only works with the newest Sony cameras that features that digital multi-interface shoe. And so we've got a great variety of uh, audio options available to the uh, ZV E10 camera. And so you'll probably want to uh, check out uh, your options in, in this area. 
One of the great things about Sony's ZV-E10 camera is its ability to be used as a webcam when we're live streaming using applications such as Zoom. Now you'll pick up the USB-C streaming uh, from the camera menu, but I've either signed it to the center button on the back of the camera for quick and easy access. And then it's a simple matter of attaching the USB-C cable, picking the camera from the camera menu in the application such as Zoom. And then we can also pick up the camera's microphone. Uh, so we don't have to use the laptop microphone. We can use the camera's microphone as well. And a great thing is we don't need to uh, install any additional software. It'll just appear directly in the, uh, the menu for when we're choosing our camera and microphone. Sony's ZV-E10 camera makes an ideal uh, camera for somebody wanting to get into vlogging because really it's never been easier to capture selfies, high quality selfies with high quality audio than it has been. Now obviously a few uh, of Sony's Bluetooth uh, accessories may also make um, vlogging a little bit easier for you. Now I've also added those ND filters. Now I typically use an ND64 and an ND8 and I can actually stack those on a bright sunny day and that ensures that I can keep the shutter speed to a low 1 50th or 1 60th of a second when shooting on location with an f 1.8 aperture. Now um, a lot of people will of course go for a variable ND filter instead just because it's a little bit easier and it's a single filter. Now of course uh, the high audio quality that I've been demonstrating is uh, courtesy of that wireless microphone system and of course if you're a little bit further away you're not physically holding your camera on that uh, Bluetooth shooting grip you can uh, use that uh, wireless remote which is also Bluetooth and so we've got uh, the best uh, group of accessories there to make uh, vlogging a really simple and easy task. Now I did highlight um, the need to use wide aperture lenses. Now I've got a range of 1.8 primes but I know some people will probably uh, also start looking at the Sigma or 1.4 primes just to get the maximum figure ground separation or background bokeh in your images. You will need the ND filters of course when using these very bright apertures on a sunlight day if you intend to keep your shutter speed at an acceptable level so we don't get choppy video. Now if you're walking very smoothly with the camera you might be able to use the active steady shot which this camera enables. It's actually a little bit more effective than just your regular in-body image stabilization but if you want really smooth clips then of course you will go and look for one of those three axis gimbals such as the one made by Ronan that is uh, pictured here. That will give you the liquid smooth transitions as you as you walk with the camera maybe over rough terrain. Now, um, we, of course, this camera does feature um, the picture profiles. So if we are recording on a sunny day, we could perhaps use the uh, PP6 profile or maybe the PP10 profile, which is really designed for um, uh, HDR video. But if you use it without uh, exporting it as a HDR video, it will um, make sure that you don't uh, clip your highlights. And then you'll just need to do a little bit of post-production to return the look to a good contrast uh, image in post-production. We do have a uh, good control over AF transition speeds. Typically um, some of the earlier Sony's would only have three transmission speeds whereas uh, now we've got uh, more transmission speeds to choose from. We do have the record lamp on the uh, left side of the camera as we're looking at and we also have uh, a, a red emph emphasized uh, perimeter to the monitor when we're actually uh, live recording. So there's no doubt uh, that we're going to be uh, talking to a camera that is actually recording and we're not just talking to ourselves. Now um, of course uh, I, some people will want to customize this camera and there are a lot of custom keys that we can program. Some of them are already set up by default such as the um, uh, custom button one down there on the uh, lower right hand side which is the product showcase setting. This overrides um, your uh, face eye priority. So all you have to do is hold the product up close to the camera and then the IAF will be disabled and will the camera will snap focus on your product that you're holding outstretched. We, um, I've uh, actually added the USB streaming to the center button because that wasn't easy to access from the menu when I was ready to start uh, USB streaming via Zoom. 
I've also act added the monitor brightness because we're not using a finder to record video you will want to perhaps uh, raise the, the monitor brightness maybe even go into the sunny weather setting when we're recording in bright sunlit conditions and uh, the background defocus is uh, set to that uh, number one on the top of the camera by default and um, one of the uh, other great features about uh, this little uh, Sony is it's the first APS-C camera that actually features the focus frame color. This was sort of missed out on the Alpha 6400 and 6600 cameras, but it has made a welcome appearance into uh, the ZV-E10 camera. Now we can use um, the, uh, the the latest RM flashes with this camera, even the um, HVL28 RM. It doesn't have an LCD panel uh, to control the flash settings, but we can actually go into the external flash settings in the menus and look at all of the uh, flash settings that we can use uh, to control the flash that's on the camera, but also off camera flash as well. We also have those dual um, uh, function menu settings so we can set up our preferred 12 menu settings on the back of the camera just by pressing the FN button uh, for stills and we can uh, program a completely different set of 12 settings for when we're shooting movies. One of the omissions of this camera which I was a bit disappointed about was the lack of ISO auto minimum shutter speed. Now this was uh, taken away on the Alpha 6100 camera. Um, now I actually prefer shooting stills with aperture priority but still holding a baseline shutter speed and this is done through ISO auto minimum shutter speed but this is missing in action on this particular ZV-E10 camera. And of course the other thing that some uh, stills photographers may miss is that um, electronic viewfinder we just have the monitor now I have to say that shooting stills I, I, I do shoot a lot of stills using the monitor I don't bother using the finder such as uh, street photography candid portraits even some uh, low vantage point action such as the uh, dogs running towards the camera on that lower left side here and I pretty much shoot all of my landscapes uh, using um, the monitor rather than the finder but some people who may miss that finder is maybe people using the long the telephoto lenses and uh, panning the camera to follow action that is obviously going to be a little bit more difficult using a monitor we do of course have the touch focus on the monitor so if as so long as you can um, uh, touch the subject as it's moving and then try and keep that uh, on the monitor the camera will take over focus from there on now I, I won't go through all of these differences between choosing an Alpha 7C uh, the compact full frame the ZV-1 that's the fixed lens RX camera and the ZV-E10 camera but you may want to just pause this video here and look at some of the advantages and disadvantages I've highlighted some of the disadvantages in uh, in red there to show you why you might prefer using either the ZV-E10 or the Alpha 7C for your vlogging needs there. Okay, so that uh, concludes my review of the uh, Sony ZV-E10. I'm Sony's ambassador, Mark Gaylor.